Hi y'all, Mike Peace with another Wood Turning uh, Tip Tuesday. Uh, I've, got a, I've got a tip on uh, gluing. You know, most of the time when we glue up wood, we're doing side grain to side grain, such as when we're doing segmented work or uh, like these, this laminated uh, handle. And that works real well. You put the glue on, carpenter's glue on there and glue it together and the glue joint is stronger than the actual wood. But with wood turning, sometimes we have a need to glue in grain to in grain. To think of two bundles of straws, because that's basically what uh, sp a spindle orientation uh, uh, piece of wood is with all the straws, the capillaries. And think about gluing those together. We know anybody who works with wood that that is a very weak joint. Let me show you how you deal with that. Let me show you a couple of common uh, examples that I've run into and where which I'm having to glue side grain, I'm sorry, in grain to in grain, even though I recognize it's not, not the perfect glue joint. It's far from perfect depending on how you do it. Uh, an example is, is these book, uh, these business card holders where I've got in grain, grains running this way. In this case, uh, this is side grain to in grain, which is still not a good joint anytime you use in grain. Uh, one I do a lot of, and I've got a video on how to make these angels. If you missed that, I'll put a link at the end. But gluing the halos on right here is in grain to in grain, and that, that's, that's a potential problem because these things get bumped a little bit and, and popped off. Another uh, example, a common one, is taking a threaded glue block and gluing a blank onto it, which again, the threaded glue block, the threaded glue blocks, when I make those, I do those side grain, but you've still got a side grain to an in grain joint, which is a weak joint. So how do we deal with these things? Well, it's easy. What you do is you take a little glue, maybe water it down just a little bit, and you're going to basically uh, put on a thin coat. Like I say, the first coat you might want to water down, and you're going to rub it in real good into the grain, and it's going to act as sizing. And then you let it just about dry. So you're giving the wood an opportunity to pull that, pull that glue into those capillaries and seal them. And this is especially a problem with, with something like a, a punky or a spalted, spalted wood. So put on some liberal, put on the uh, glue liberally. Rubbing it in is, is, is one of the critical uh, aspects of it. And just Rub it in. And just let it sit for a few minutes. Uh, it can be just about dry. Uh, it doesn't have to be dry, but you do want to let it sit for uh, long enough where basically it has had a chance to get absorbed into the wood. Then you come back, put on another coat of glue, and put your two objects together. And I want to give this shout out to Ken Gunnell, Lieutenant Colonel, U.S. Army, retired, who was kind enough to send me some samples of Abernet. I've never used Abernet, so I'm anxious to try it. It's got these holes in it, and it lasts a long, long time. So thank you very much for the Abernet, Ken, and thank you very much for your service. Ken also included a, a couple of pictures of his uh, tool rack. Uh, the one on the left is the front side, the business side, and the one on the right is kind of the back side. And basically he used, if it's not clear from the photograph, uh, something like this, this outfit, uh, I'm sorry, this table saw outfeed table to, to hang it on. So that was a great idea, Ken. Thanks for uh, sending that to me.